I'm Paprika, this is Kerbal Space Program. Um, today I am sort of going back to a video I did a while ago where I sent Jeb up to Minmus to take some samples and look for life. Um, but now that we have the science uh, equipment, I'm sending up a probe to uh, see what I can see. Now, uh, this is all sped up three times. You may have noticed that one of the engines just exploded. But I decided to keep going anyway. And, you know, I got there with fuel to spare. So I was obviously being overly cautious with my fuel consumption. Uh, um, I found this really quite easy to get to Minmus with the new manoeuvre nodes. They're really, really good. Um, so before I start talking about life on Minmus, um, I'll sort of go through what, um, sort of how I went about it really, and this is me, I'm just, I used them to sort of tell me when, how to circularize my orbit, but I didn't do it very well, I didn't time it right, and I wasn't really paying attention, and I don't know why I'm escaping from Kerbin there, but, <clears throat> um, so, firstly, to get to Minmus, or any other body really, um, whoops, um, you want to see the ascending and descending nodes, that's uh, the inclination change, um, and sort of when you need to uh, change the inclination to match that of your target orbit, so um, if you set a um, node there and use, I think, the blue triangles, uh, no, the purple triangles rather, um, you can use them to get uh, your orbit inclined to the same. In this case, it's like 6.6 .6 degrees or something. Um, and so I got it down to pretty much in the same alignment. And then I kind of guessed at where on my orbit I should put it, but it worked and I got an encounter. Um, so, yeah, I'm not... I think that's the best way, just guessing, see if it will work, if it doesn't, try somewhere else. Um, and the sort of close approach thing helps you give an educated guess, I suppose. Because um, if, if, if you're nowhere near, you can see which direction you're nowhere near to it in. So it's all, it's all a lot easier than it was in point seventeen, and you, don't, and you can look at it all without actually burning fuel. Um, so I made a mistake here, burnt too much, and just used um, whatever it's called to bring it back down. So I'm coming in at quite a weird angle, so I end up in a really polar orbit, but it doesn't particularly matter. Um, I really like the uh, the whole interface that they've brought in now. The, the time to burn, the estimated burn time, it's all brilliant. Um, and when I work out, well, when I get better at how to work out, at working out how much delta V I have, then that'll be, I'll be set. Because um, I can't really, I'm not very good at working out what's actually in, in the rocket. Um, so I'm just circularizing around Minimus here. Again, using the maneuver nodes. Um, they're really useful even just for circularizing because you means you don't have to be in the map view for everything which is nice so i can have a look at minmus i think have they moved have they taken lakes out on minmus because there's there seem to be a lot less than there used to be um i didn't go to it that often but yeah so i think this is i stop slowing this down in a second just so i can have a look at the um here we go the so it's minus 200 degrees, so that's what, 40 Kelvin-ish, 42, 43? So that's, you know, it's the vacuum of space, it's not not unexpected. Um, that's, I suppose, how much gravity uh, Minimus puts out. And obviously we're in a vacuum, so the pressure doesn't really matter, and I'm not accelerating, so the acceleration is really low. Um, I don't think I actually looked at it there, but it would be, um, I guess, slightly present because of the um, gravity from Minimus. So, 
I'm trying to target a landing towards the ice lakes, but because I'm stupid, um, I basically pointed myself at the wrong... I, I, I forgot which way round Minmus I was orbiting, so ended up aiming for a really hilly, bumpy area, which uh, was quite entertaining for the landing. And here I'm just trying to make it so that I land in the uh, bright side, but I can't. I couldn't work out how to do that with the maneuver nodes, so I am just sort of making it up as I go along. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, it's not ideal landing conditions, um, and it ended up being quite an entertaining little landing when I actually got down. No, I've still got loads of fuel left in the. Uh, my little minimus transfer stage, which is pretty good. This might, this craft might be able to get to like Juno or whatever, um, especially if the other stage doesn't explode. Um, so yeah, we're coming down now. I think this is back to normal, normal video speed. So I'm coming down on the steepest hill I could find because I like it. I like a challenge. Um, I don't know what the ma the maneuver node is at the moment. I couldn't find it to delete it, but I put like five engines on this, five of the tiny teeny motors for amps, but I'm only using one, um, which is great, because, but I could toggle between them if I wanted to, because of the action groups, which are fantastic. Um, they're really, really good. So it's just a pretty standard landing, to be honest. Um, so yeah, why why am I looking for life on Mimus, in case you haven't seen the other one? Which, you know, isn't very good, because the audio is all weird. It's got a weird buzzing noise in the background. Um, <clears throat> so basically, someone said they think Mimus is sort of salty, or um, rather than ice. Because, I can't remember who said that, but um, because um, all the water evaporated, or whatever. So I thought, because... Um, they found bacteria in a salt mine in Africa that uh, had, had been in there for 250 million years. So um, maybe you know if that can survive, and and they grew it, they were able to uh, grow cultures from it on agar plates or whatever they fancied growing it. Um, so just coming into land now, and it's actually quite interesting that I landed on the hill because I start sliding down. And that lets me get like a temperature gradient for the different altitudes, which is weird, um, but still quite cool. Um, so yeah, I thought if um, those bacteria could survive, why can't ones in Minmus? You know, because uh, um, yeah, there's no reason why they couldn't. Because like if they can make spores, then they can survive. But that, that's assuming that they would be similar to bacteria we have here on Earth. Um, so when I get the temperature up, there we go, minus 42. That's not cold enough to kill bacteria. Unless you flash freeze them to that, and then it doesn't especially work. Freezing just stops them growing, it doesn't kill them. So again, they would definitely be able to be dormant in these temperatures. But what's interesting is, temperature is slowly rising. I think that's cause, just because I'm getting close to the centre of the planet. But what we're looking for is, um, the coldest that any bacteria on Earth can grow to is minus 8 degrees C. Um, and those are psychrophiles. Um, which basically just means that, that that's like a group of them, that's not the name of the bacteria. It's possibly an archaea, actually, um, which is slightly different. But, um, so yeah, we're looking for 8 degrees. Um, and anything above 8 degrees would be a magical bonus. So it's sliding down, but something to take into account is it's the sun is very nearly setting. So... Uh, it's going to be quite cold, as the evenings are rather chilly, especially at the moment, because I'm in England, and it's December, so it's freezing cold. Um, I'm sitting here with my dressing gown, um, even though it's sort of mid-afternoon. Um, so 
So yeah, we're slow, slowing to a halt now, my little, my little probe. Um. So yeah, it's still, it's still minus 38. So, but that's, as I said, the, that's the nighttime temperature, or the sunset temperature. Unfortunately, I only put four solar panels on this, and two little batteries, which isn't enough to run it all night which I wanted to do, just to see how it affected it, because, although it doesn't seem to change that much, it's just sort of, it's, it's just, you know, um, it's staying the same until, bang, it stops being powered, there we go, no power, and that's sort of, all the batteries run out, so I should probably put a nuclear thing on, um, on my next probe, for wherever I send that, or less science on it. Um, I thought about putting lights on, but thought that that wouldn't have enough charge. But you know, it it didn't anyway. Um, so I'm just fast forwarding it to the early morning. The sunrise. There's the sunrise. And what's the temperature? The temperature is minus 16 and rising. And now this does rise above 8 degrees. So bacteria from Earth could grow if they had the right nutrients, um, which, you know, there may be. But the best thing is, it eventually, very slowly, but eventually reaches temperatures at which water can be liquid, which is super useful for life, and actually goes up to zero, and I'm still quite high up a mountain, so it'll probably be slightly warmer further down. So that means that not even the extreme cyclophiles, just the regular ones. Well, it's still pretty extreme, but that would open up, that would make it easier for m more life. So, could there be life on Minmus? Definitely. Look at that. Zero. Zero degrees. So, yeah, there we go. Um, that's pretty much the conclusion is yeah I think there could be life present on Minmus and that's just for for one of the moons that's pretty um it's pretty big to be honest um so just gonna rename that uh what did I call it uh, the Minmus the Psychro 1 because uh, it's looking for cold cold loving um, life, the uh, psychophilic bacteria or whatever. So, um, hopefully you found that interesting, maybe useful with the flight, maybe interesting about the life and stuff, and exciting about the science tools. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it.